I reject that. I reject the idea of modern neurologists that might feel that depression is genetically in, inherited or just a product of genetic damage. The reason I don't believe that is I work with so many people, alcoholics, drug addicts, people with a prison record, and I took that out in one session. So if it was genetic, it wouldn't come out. That's how I know it works. And I don't know if you saved the letters, do you? That we get from people that said, I was about to turn my life in, I have no reason. You gave me a reason to live and work. So that's all I can go by, not genetics. I can't do anything with genetics. If a doctor says someday we'll have a cure for cancer, that may encourage a person, but it won't encourage me. Unless I say, what is your approach? And they give me an approach that would encourage me if I had cancer. Do you understand? Because I'm sure you'll get well. Have faith in yourself. Cancer don't give a shit about it. It just keeps multiplying. You might live a week longer or three weeks longer if you have self-confidence. But always ask a person, like nobody asks any of these T, t group people, what would you do under these circumstances? How would you solve this problem? How would you get the Democrats to see the Republican point of view? They never talk about that. They talk about their own limitations. I would say, therefore, most capitalists that ride that system are very simple people with a low self-image. Now, I did mention in the past that psychologists have a higher suicide rate than normal. That means they go undergo depression. And if they really ask the question, what is depression? So I don't know. Then a guy writes a theory of genetics, of the genes. That doesn't take away the depression. Do you understand that? Taking drugs might tranquilize you, or drinking alcohol when you're depressed might take you out of your self-image. You just sit there and look around. It makes you feel relaxed and comfortable. Next day is a hangover and a depression, if you don't deal with it. Now, you can't deal with it if you don't even know how to go about looking into it. So let me show you how you go about looking into what is a depression. You read the books on genetics and you understand that pills can make a person feel more in equilibrium. Is the chemistry of the body in equilibrium? If you're depressed, yes. Your digestive system stops, a lot of other things manifest themselves. But if you feel positive about what you're doing, if you're sawing a tree down and say, I hate to do this, well, you poison yourself. You understand what I mean? Anything you do that you don't like. But if you say, I have to repair that model or clean it, and that's going to take about two and a half hours. That depends on your predictability. If it takes five hours, you might be disappointed. Not in the vision, not in the thing, in your estimation. Do you understand? It's your own estimation. If you figure it should take you three days to do a given job, if it takes 23 days, you may get disappointed. So I don't know how long it'll take, but I'm going to check it out. And you do a certain amount of work, and you predict the next, and if it comes close, you can use that method of predictability. Is there anything? You, did you get this message? This is how you deal with depressed people. And that's what depression is. Unless you have further questions. Put it out there. Let's see how it works. If you get a response saying, you know, that really helped a lot. Psychiatrists don't even know what the question is. They think some people are depressed and others aren't. And some are happy-go-lucky no matter what. They have a self-image even though it's false. If you feel, if you're a minister and you administer people's problems and they feel good about it, you feel you're doing something useful. There are ministers that feel that 
to administering to human need. And as long as the person says, God bless you, thank you, you've helped me a lot. Whatever the minister did helped them. But if the minister was an operational linguist and he helped them to understand what they're going through and why people get depressed, I think that's better than comforting them, saying, you'll pull out of it, I have every confidence that you will. Well, if your minister says that, there may be a basis for it. But it's not real. Knowing the difference is a problem. Just well, the Tea Party has a group of people that believe in the structure of this economic system. Why? Because they're successful in it. A military man that's awarded a higher position, if he gets to be captain or lieutenant colonel, he gets reward for it. So he feels very proud. The more merit badges he has, the greater he feels. If a Nazi has a lot of merit badges, the Jew don't feel too good about that. But the Nazi feels great about it. Do you understand? So what is a reinforcer? Whatever the hell reinforces people. Except alcohol. That's a dependency that makes you feel like you don't you lose your identity and I'll go, say, did I say that when I was drunk? Because you don't even know what you said. That means you don't have your own identity. Identity means uh, Fresco likes to walk in the sun. He likes to make things. He likes to talk to people about their problems. But he feels that if I share the tools I have and say, keep coming to me, and, uh, and I never give them my tools, I do not help them, really, unless I give them the tools that I have. The same tools that enables me to solve a problem, okay? But I'd rather not give these tools out because I'm afraid of the culture. They'll commercialize on it, use it, but they won't change the way people think about things. Not only depression, I try to change the way people think about most everything. Now, if you don't understand what I'm saying, you might even hate what I'm saying, or say that doesn't answer the question. I remember in your old lectures, you used to tell people to write a list when you're, not, when you're feeling better, when you're not depressed. Write a list of all the things you like to do, all the things you don't like to do, and then when you're depressed, look at the list and just do those things that you like to do. And when you're depressed, you don't feel like doing it. But you used but, to use that as a tool, didn't you? Yeah, well, I, it worked at the time. All I can say is I'm giving you the focal point of a depression, loss of self-image. Who am I? Where am I going? What is my life about? I don't know. I don't even know if I'd be successful in anything. That's no self-image. You're always successful in something. You can always teach somebody something. You're not totally a total failure. If a person comes to me and says, I'm depressed, that's better. If they come here. Well, you give them a social awareness that football is really a little spot in entertainment. But when you inform people, it changes a lot of things. See, football just makes the game pleasant, but if you lose, you're depressed. And they get in the fights a lot. I don't know if you know that, all over the world. So it isn't a good thing. No competitive sport. When a guy hits a golf ball and it misses, he throws a stick down on the ground. The puck, is that what you call it? He throws it on the ground. He feels bad. And when the audience applauds when he hits it and it goes in the hole, they applaud and it makes him feel good. He has a self-image. But if he hits it and it doesn't go in the hole, the audience just looks on. And they don't reinforce him. So if I designed a magnetic system in the hole and a steel ball in the gulf, even if he misses me doing it in the hole, you know, what do you want? It's just such a ridiculous game of hitting a golf ball and looking for it. What a ridiculous game. Or racing cars around in a circle. If you get your kicks out of that, 
it's because you have a low self-image and you love it when the audience says, you won that race. Now, you did a beautiful job. You know, and that is a, a, a moment in time. But the things we are working on are, are everything. The games of the future, things of that sort. Now, a game of the future, a typical game of the future, is not made by people who make games. They would be like this. There'd be a map, and then you find out which state has most cancer, and you put these little beads there, and the other state that has the least amount of cancer. You know, when you're through playing the game, you don't know what the hell exists in America. You know, the states with the highest divorce rate, the highest crime rate, where there's more poverty. If you find out that poverty encourages aberrant behavior, then if you don't want to do anything about it, you don't understand that problem. If you give a working man a little above the standard of living, so he can buy a television set, a radio, a cell phone, if you just give him enough to live on, you don't build a steady person, a loyal person. If a person has a little more than they need, they'll come back to work. If you give them more than they need, they won't show up. So the money system kills incentives to go to work. And people say, fuck it, I'm not going on. I'm going to call in sick. Did you ever hear that? So they call in sick. Well, that isn't the answer. You should be obedient to your corporation. That, that's a control device, you know. I love my company. If you love your company, you know, that's no self-image at all. The union has a self-image. They like to see the company succeed, but they like a piece of the action. So instead of making $18 a week, they go on strike and they get $25 a week. But the company loses the competitive edge, because they have to raise the price of their product. So they hate unions, because it lowers their standard of living. The unions love unions, the members. It raises their standard of living. Everybody is right. That's the trouble with the world. But nobody knows what to do. Nobody wants to give up their position of advantage. I don't know how much of this you're going to stick out there, but... Okay. Take it from here.